Do's and Don'ts of Automatic Transmission Ownership and Maintenance. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy. Before we get started, a little history lesson first. The automatic transmission was first introduced back in the 1940s, drastically changing the driving experience by allowing vehicles to change gears without a manual stick shift. The first commercially successful automatic transmission was called the Hydromatic and was introduced by General Motors in 1940. It used a hydraulic fluid coupling to transfer power and a set of gears to shift automatically between four forward gears. This innovation made it easier for more people to operate cars, especially in urban settings like going up a hill. Other automakers soon followed GM's lead and automatic transmissions began to gain widespread popularity. Since World War II, automatic transmissions have evolved significantly in the 1950s and 60s, brought advancements such as torque converters and electronically controlled transmissions, making shifting even smoother and more efficient. By the 1980s, computers were integrated into vehicles, allowing more precise control over gear changes. The development of continuously variable transmissions, known as CVTs, came along and dual clutch systems further expanded the capabilities of automatics, giving car owners better fuel efficiency and performance. Today, most vehicles on the road offer some form of automatic transmission, but they also come with some downside, including some very expensive repairs if not taken care of properly. Now our in-house auto expert, Alex Stevens, joins me to talk about the do's and don'ts of an automatic transmission. Alex, let's start with what to do first. Yeah, you know, there's a, a lot of things to cover in this. I'm excited about this uh, this topic. So, yeah, um, I would say that one of the first things you should do is check your fluid regularly, right? If your vehicle has a dipstick. There are um, some newer vehicles, trucks, and SUVs that actually don't have a physical dipstick. Sealed transmission. It's a 100% sealed transmission. And actually, in our last show, there was a comment uh, in the in the video about that. Someone asked the question, like, hey, what do I do with these transmission that has a lifetime fluid service or, you know, doesn't require a full-fledged maintenance? So, you know, obviously you have to go to the dealer for that. But, yeah, checking your fluid, keeping an eye on your fluid, checking for leaks, those kind of go hand in hand. Um, and then uh, the second thing would be do use the correct transmission fluid. Um, and there's a reason why they spec that. That's based right. off the sealing conditions, the, the friction modifier for that transmission, what kind of clutches they're using internal, you know, based off the material they're using. Um, so that fluid um, cleans or has an additive, you know, so forth, right? Similar to like a rear diff for like a uh, gear in a rear diff. But um, so, yeah, do you use know, maybe the right. You already knew this, Alex, but you know, way back in the beginning when they first launched transmissions, they actually used whale oil. I can believe that. The lubricated oh, yeah. transmission. Yep. yep. Could you imagine what that probably smelled like when it got hot? That was probably pretty rough. Yeah. That was, yeah. I'm glad they don't. Well, Something I will say. going on around here. Yeah. Well, I will say some of the new fluids are probably smell worse or the same as well oil with the with the amount of additives they put in this stuff, especially yeah. when it gets hot. So, yeah. And I would say, um, you know, there are updates, too, to fluids. Like, um, I would say I'm, an, I'm not going to say I'm an advocate for this necessarily, but, like, there are some aftermarket companies that are making fluids, synthetics, that um, that do – are maybe a little better than the OEM. They have a little better additive or something like that that can help improve a transmission, you know, fluid chain interval, whatever. But So, yeah, using the right fluid is essential, too, as well as checking it. Um, and, you know, uh, I would say the third thing would be do follow – the manufacturer's recommendations. I think we talked about this a couple of times about the kind of vehicles that we see in my industry that I'm working now is severe duty or light duty. Right. Right. Like if you're just driving your truck to the grocery store and kind of, you know, not really using it as a, what a truck is for, or if your vehicle is not in bad weather conditions, dusty roads, large mountainous areas, like that's maybe those areas would be considered severe duty or heavier usage. So they sometimes manufacturers in your owner's manual will set a, hey, is this a standard use or standard duty cycle or is this a severe duty? And they'll have different uh, mileage recommendations on that. Maybe it's uh, like, for example, my, my, my GMC pickup is, I believe, every 35,000 to 45,000 is the oil change mm -hmm. interval for that transmission fluid. Um, and I've seen them be as high as 50,000 or 60 or even 100. Mm -hmm. Um and then some of them are as low as twenty five or thirty thousand. If it's a performance car or a uh, DSG or you know dual clutch, they have specialty uh, intervals as well. So do follow that. Um, and I'm going to add to that actually is have that changed by a replicable shop who knows how to perform that service. Mm -hmm. 
You can tempt it yourself if you like, and you, most of these can be done by yourself, but make sure you do your research. It's really so, easy to get it off when you do it yourself. So There is, yeah. Too much, not good. Not yeah. enough, not right. good. Right, And there's a, yeah, there's a fine line. Sometimes a little bit more is okay. You know, oh, it's going to, you know, whatever. But, yeah, you got to be really mindful of that. So, um, and it, I would say, too, with that is um, if you, let's say you, you've probably heard this story. Never have your transmission flushed. You're, you'll be buying a new transmission the next week. There is some truth to that. Most of the time people are doing a flush where they've already had a problem. They're like, oh, it's slipping. Oh, I'm going to have it flushed out, get all the junk out of it, and it'll be good as new. Right? Um, but so there is a recommendation. Some some manufacturers recommend a flush. They have a procedure for flushing that is a dealer procedure, mm-hmm. and then some of them require what's called a pan and filter change. You drop the pan, you change the fluid and the filter inside. Um, so once again, go back to the owner's manual, talk to the people who are uh, experts on that car, and and then make a make a, a wise decision from there. So um, number uh, five is does your vehicle have tow haul mode? Mm-hmm. If it does have tow haul mode. Use it. Use it. Um, but also know this, that there is a tow haul mo- mode based off some of the, the pounds or how much payload you're carrying. So, like, maybe you're not pulling a trailer, but you got a pallet of water in the back. You might want to use tow haul mode. Like, So those are all factors. Um, also, if you live in a mountainous environment, um, there's a spec for that. Hey, if you're climbing large grades, pulling trailers or anything like that, Tow haul mode is also included for that. It's not just for pulling a trailer or whatever. So, um, and you know, what, what is the point of tow haul mode? Well, it's going to change maybe the lockup interval in the transmission where the the torque converter, how long the torque converter stays locked up or when it locks up, um, how long the transmission will hold a gear over a certain point. Um, and then two, it also helps keep the transmission from overheating. There's, you know, maybe it'll allow the thermostat, if it's electronically controlled, to open sooner for the transmission and, and so forth, right? So those are some features too. Um, number six is monitor the condition of your fluid. I think that is essential. Um, if you have a dipstick, once again, if you have a stick, dipstick. So, you know, and that's why I think making sure you maintain your vehicle, take it to the dealer regularly, is it, you know, good. Let's say you do have a dipstick. What color should the transmission fluid be? It should be black, like oil. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> no, probably not. So um, usually, uh, most 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 people, most manufacturers will tell you, or most manuals will say, it should be like a an orange, uh, maybe a light orange color, depending on the man- what kind of quality, red, uh, dark burgundy, red color. You know, um, there's also a smell to mm-hmm. it. Um, if it smells like burnt, you know, charred smell, yeah, you might want to have that checked out. So should have a, I would think, a very uh, additive smell. So now we got some cold weather coming on. Yeah, this is probably my one of my biggest recommendations. I will say mm-hmm. is let your vehicle warm up. We live in the great, you know, wintry north here. Um, let your vehicle warm up, even if you live in the south. So if you hop in your vehicle, some vehicles have a transmission fluid temp gauge or. Uh, on your digital dash, you can go through and select it and see it on your screen, is uh, let that vehicle get up to temperature. If you hop in your vehicle, let's say it's let's say the ambient temperature is 75 degrees. Mm-hmm. You hop in your vehicle, you fire that thing up, and you drop her down in gear, and you just speed away. Your transmission may say 75 degrees, but you got to think how mu- what the temperature of the metals are, what the temperature of the fluid is. Everything's got to expand and warm up. And then mm-hmm. you're just ripping on this transmission. And it has an, it actually has an operating temperature. Um, and that can be anywhere from uh, 150 degrees. It can be 200 degrees. It can be 180. So it's made to optimize when all those fluids reach all those crevices and everything expands and gets to all the places that need to be lubricated. Mm-hmm. It may not be fully able to lubricate all those important parts until it's reached that operating temperature. Mm-hmm. So am I saying you need to sit there and wait till that thing reaches its operating temperature? I personally do. Um, I, my rule of thumb personally is this is what I, Alex does. If I can't get to that temperature, I think around a hundred to 110 degrees is like a good help, place to start out. And even then I don't beat on the vehicle. I, I give it an opportunity to, to kind of get, um, uh, get going. So take it easy out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't just get in and rip on it. You know, um, you know, unless it's emergency, then Hey, it's, it's what it is. But, um, so yeah, next thing I would say, um, do listen and pay attention to how your transmission sounds mm-hmm. is it grinding is it whining is it making some strange noise when you put it in gear or take it out of gear is it clunking bucking like those are all things you need to be aware of and if, the, if something does change then go get it looked at um and if i may add to that too kevin would be um i think many times we get caught in like a loop 
or we just get in our vehicle. We gotta go to work. You fire your car up. You just, yep, yep, you go. Take a second. You buy a new vehicle, or or maybe you've been driving the same vehicle. Take a moment and like sit there and listen to the car. You may hear a squeak that you never heard before. Like get accustomed to your vehicle. I think that's very important. And I'm gonna probably back up a little bit. Read your owner's manual. Get familiar with the owner's manual. Get, get familiar with the service cycles of the manual, all those things. So, mm-hmm. um, Next thing I would say, do pay attention to the warning lights that are on your dash. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's easy to kind of not see those things, but, you know, is your transmission temperature warning light coming on for some reason or check transmission fluid or service? Like, you know, pay attention to what's going on the dash. You know, make it a point to look at your, look at your, your dash if you're driving. You know, obviously checking your speed, but... There's other information that will pop up for you. Um, I think uh, this is probably more of a recommendation um, or maybe if a consideration you should consider. I would say this is a, a necessity for everything, but look at doing a transmission cooler. Mm-hmm. Um, those are things that... Especially for heavier towing. Yeah. If you live in the mountainous areas or a real hot climate, say Arizona or Utah, places like Texas, like look at doing a transmission cooler. If you can lower the transmission temperature during heavy usages or use... It's going to keep parts from wearing out. It's going to be better for it. It's going to extend its life, right? And there's a couple other things you can do. You can add a, um, a larger uh, transmission pan to hold more fluid, which helps more lubrication. Uh, helps it run cooler, right, because more fluid to take on that burden. Um, so there's just a couple of that factors. Now, is that every vehicle? Like, can your Honda, Honda Accord or your Civic or, you know, whatever take a cooler or a bigger pan? No, not always. Some of them are just what it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that's where you go back to, like, hey, are you – Maintaining it, having it service, treating it right, all that stuff. So, so those are a lot of the do's, how to take care and maintain your transmission. Alex has talked about some things to not do. Yeah, don't ignore fluid leaks. The transmissions are often, Kevin, just forgot about. Mm-hmm. You check your oil all the time. You change your oil, change your air filter, your cabin filter, all these things. But transmissions, you just get, like, abused, right? Right. So they will develop leaks. Oh, yeah, it's whatever. It's fine. It's just transmission fluid. Like, make sure you pay attention to any change in leaks or maybe it starts getting – maybe it's a sealed transmission and you can't quite find a leak or it's hard to find it. Pay attention to what the temperature is. So that's another thing. Um, do not – don't drive through a flood unless it's an emergency. But transmissions also have vents on them. They're not mm-hmm. – they may be sealed – you know, from the factory, but they have a breather system. They do have to breathe just like a rear end or a vehicle has a breather system. So, like, if you drive that transmission through a flood or a flooded area, um, if it's an emergency, it is what it is, right? Mm-hmm. But you can suspect you, you, some transmission issues if you're sucking in moisture or water through the vent system. There is There are vent pipes and vent tubes that need to be checked. So that's something to consider talking to your mechanic about, you know, your technician or the shop you're using. So, um, yeah, don't. You mentioned that in the fleet of trucks that you manage, because we're in North Dakota where it's often snowy and cold. Mm -hmm. And in various times of year, you go out on job sites that can tend to be very muddy. Those can have an impact on those ventilation ports, too. Yeah. So one thing uh, we try to do is, like, I have a rule every week. We make sure we wash all our trucks. Um, and we, we don't just like wash outside. We make sure we try to get the undercarriage and something that we try to do, uh, am I going to say we do it every single time? We aim to take a quick peek at all the vent, vent tubes and on the rear ends and the transmissions and transfer cases. Yeah. We make sure to try and at least keep those trucks clean, clean the bottom of them. So if you live in a dusty or, you know, maybe a dirty environment, good regular car washes done right mm-hmm. can help prevent some issues too. So Keeping the dust and grime off that transmission helps keep it run cooler too. If you have a, if you have you know quarter inch caked up of grime on that transmission, it's like insulation. It's gonna hold yeah. the heat in. So yeah, so um, get the undercarriage special when you go through the. Yeah, car right. Do do you do it every time? Uh, if you could, maybe not. If you can afford it, but okay. We've all seen movies where they've done this, where you know they're they're running from something or in a in a hot chase, and they got to make a corner really quick, and they'll be driving. They they are in drive, and they slip that thing in reverse and spin the car around and go the other way. Yeah, that's just for movies. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> don't don't be driving and then slam it in reverse. Um, that can do some major damage. And I would also say if you're backing in somewhere and you're, like, driving and you're still kind of rolling, you just go from drive to reverse, come to, a, come to a complete stop. Give it a – I mean, obviously you can shift it, but, you know, give it a nice, good, easy shift. Don't just – be moving and lug that puppy around um they can they can they can do some damage and don't um, slap the thing into park either i yep, imagine 100 vehicles stop. yeah i would say good nice positive engagements are key don't mm-hmm. just 
you know, slap around. Now, unless you're racing, that's fine. You know, that's yeah. no problem. <laughs> uh, they're maybe built to do that. So, and actually, um, I'll try and find some data for you to show you sometime. But there's uh, some really cool testing videos on how they test transmissions um, for park. Uh, reverse and drive where they actually send them down a hill with full payload and they'll sling that thing in reverse while it's in drive to see what the damage rate is so they they know that that could happen and they try to build some stuff into the transmissions that help prevent that but don't overload your vehicle that's another factor here um you know we see a payload sticker or a tow rating on the side of a vehicle whether that's a car or a truck or suv um, Take it seriously. Yeah, think through that. And it's not just for the transmission. I think it's for the whole brake system. It's the engine system. It's the chassis. We talked about this earlier in the do's. Do use the right fluid. So in this one, don't don't use the wrong fluid for the transmission. Like mm-hmm. I can't stress that enough. Um, in the manual is a explicit you know, uh, transmission fluid type. Um, and there may be updates. There's sometimes a redundancy where, say, uh, Rev A will work with work with a certain one. So make sure you, you you pick the right fluid. And if you don't know that, you can't find that. There's some great online. You can always call the dealer. You can always go into a, a part store and they can look it up for you and tell you what fluid it is. But make sure you take your time and do that right. And don't just put any old fluid. Um, and some some um, transmission fluids or manufacturers of fluids make what's called a multi-vehicle spec mm-hmm. for, like, older vehicles. Like, you know, if you have a vintage Chevy or vintage Ford, you know, they had a, a common fluid that they would make that had both additives in it that would work for both transmissions. Right. Um, that, that is possible. I'm not saying it's not out there, and there's some transmission that can work with. But especially for these modern cars, they some of those are very strict fluids. Um, Volkswagen's known for that, but some of their transmissions. GM has gotten on that board. Ford has as well. So just make sure you're paying attention to your fluids. And don't skip the fluid change. I said this earlier. Um, people sometimes think like, oh, it's transmission. doesn't need to be fluid change. Oh, we don't change it to 100. If it's at 100,000 miles, never change it ever again. But do take the time to make sure you're not neglecting that part of your transmission. That's, you know, the fluid is no different than oil, right? If you mm-hmm. never change your oil in your motor... Your engine, that's going to be a major potential failure point. So same thing with transmission fluid, same thing with power steering or brake systems. Like those fluids all have a life cycle. They all need to be checked and changed. So don't do not do a neutral drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, have I not done a neutral drop before? I've done it. Uh, it's, it, you know, we've all, when we're teenagers, Kevin, I'm sure you might have <laughs> got out there in your hot rod. Rev it up. Know, it sounds mean. Yeah. Slam it in drive and do it nice, you know, um, you know. We've all done it, I'm sure. Maybe maybe online you haven't done it, but I've done it. But that is some serious damage to a transmission. Um, yeah, and actually it's funny. Manufacturers kind of caught on to that, and some of these modern vehicles will not allow it. If you if you rev the motor over a certain RPM and you go to go from park to or from neutral to drive or whatever, it actually will not allow the transmission to get engage. It'll keep it in either neutral or park, and it will not allow the transmission to engage and actually let the RPM to come down to a safe place and then force you to go back to park to put it back in drive or neutral to put back in drive. So I think the manufacturers have kind of caught on to, you know, man, this transmission is slipping. Let me just do a good neutral drop and we'll maybe get this replaced. But so, yeah. Try to help a few idiots out there from destroying their car. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, once again, you know, when we're young, maybe make an unpoor decision. Have I done it? Yeah, we all have. So. Yeah, another don't would be transmission temperature. We talked about it earlier, let it get the good temperature, but pay attention. If you're towing heavy mm-hmm. or maybe you're um, – I actually want to talk about two points here with this. If you're towing heavy, like pulling a trailer or have a high payload, and that could be kids on a family trip going through the mountains with a bunch of baggage on the back and luggage, right? Like th- those, that's all weight, okay? Mm-hmm. So um, pay attention to your temperature on your transmission, is it a hot summer day? Am I working such a hard? You know, I would think regular when you go to get fuel, stop and let let the thing cool off, let it run. I would say um, there's two ways to cool a transmission off. Driving it easy is one way, like let it just get airflow across it, and also pulling it and let it idle for a moment. Um, it actually will get a heat soak out. It'll actually go up in temperature, and then mm-hmm. it'll once it's the fluid is cycle, cycling through the cooling system and everything, then it'll actually come back down. And then you can shut it off, right? Sure. So if you're coming in hot, screaming through the mountains or maybe hauling a boat or a trailer or whatever you might be doing, pay attention to that temperature. Don't just shut it off. Let it cool off for a moment before you shut it off. But then if it starts to overheat, obviously don't just shut the vehicle off. You might want to pull over, let it idle, 
in part, and it will start to cool itself off as it moves its fluid around. So mm-hmm. there's a couple of ways, but pay attention to that temperature. That's and there is um, there's warnings. You know, transmissions uh, manufacturers build in warnings. So it'll it'll illuminate a, a warning on your dash or something like that to let you know, hey, you're getting to a point. And they also have this thing where that you pull that you begin to go into a limp mode. Where it won't let the transmission like kill itself necessarily. It'll actually reduce power. You actually won't be able to have physical more engine power. It'll start to restrict that to keep that temperature under control, which is good, but it's not a perfect system. It can also still do damage. So, but they do their best to try and help control that. So, um, and we talked about this a minute ago, cooling system, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of vehicles, transmission coolers are built into the radiator system. So you have your radiator, you know, your engine engine coolant goes through said radiator, right, and cools off the engine, but usually in the bottom or in the sides, they'll actually have an internal uh, mini radiator or a heat exchanger that the transmission fluid is passing through. And it's using the engine temp or engine cooling to help suck or wick out that temperature out of that transmission fluid. Mm-hmm. So just like heating up the transmission, we talked about, right, the engine gets warmer. That hot coolant will actually warm the fluid in the transmission, help it warm up faster, and the same principle for cooling it off, right? So um, if you have a, a car that's overheating, you may also have a transmission that's overheating but due to that. So good maintenance on the whole vehicle, it all ties together, you know. So make sure you're maintaining your cooling system or your engine will also help your transmission last longer, or it has the potential to, rather. So, Too much heat can be killer. Yeah, yeah. Temperatures can really destroy stuff if mm-hmm. you're not careful. So, um, And I would say don't forget to use your parking brake. Um, there is obviously what's called a parking paw inside of a transmission, mm-hmm. right, that's used to keep the vehicle from rolling forward. But if you're parked on a hill, um, using a parking brake is a good way to kind of help keep some strain off some of that stuff. Um, is it, you know going to keep the transmission from going bad no but it's it's a good wise thing to do and it's also good for your brakes and your parking brake assembly to be be utilized Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people actually don't use that so um but if you have a heavy load like my truck does this actually if i'm in tow haul mode and pulling a heavy trailer and i pull at a certain degree of incline the truck has a gyro sensor it can measure the yaw of the vehicle right it'll automatically apply the parking brake for you so those nice. are some cool features that you can find in, in these modern vehicles that have really come a long way. So um, software updates is another one at the dealer. Like, I uh, actually had an interesting comment in the last show. It's like going to the dealer for software updates. They're going to tell you you need a software update, but you also need a transmission or you need an issue, right? So um, if your vehicle has a software update, make sure you get it done. Uh, they're doing it for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously. Hmm. Last one I would say, you know, there's some good stuff out there. Let's say you're having a transmission problem. Alex, my transmission's slipping, or it's, I mean, it feels like it's not moving. Have you checked your fluid? Oh, my fluid level's good, and the color seems okay. I, I'm going to put this, you know, uh, transmission slip fix in it, or I'm going to throw this cool additive that I found at the parts store in it. Or um, Walmart. Or Walmart, right? Or, you know, uh, my, my grandfather, you told me to put baking soda in it or something, right? Or sawdust, right? You know, you probably heard those stories. But, um, yeah, that's not always a good fix. Am I saying that it's, it might get you off the side of a road or get you out of a bad situation, or maybe get you home until you can actually get it repaired? But a lot of those things are not going to solve your problem. If your transmission's slipping, then it probably needs some work. Going to the first aid aisle at Walmart probably isn't a great idea. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, am not, now, am I saying that some of those additives may not solve some of your problems, like I said, to get you out of a situation? 100%. I've, I've used some of those quick fixes or those, you know, features like that to help get me out of home from a situation and, and it's worked mm-hmm. but i didn't just like oh it's, it's fixed and just keep driving and like every day no it's it's not that scenario don't do brake stands you know if you're trying to do a burnout it's probably not great for your transmission unless it's built for it mm-hmm. just gonna say that um one of my favorite things when i was in racing was if you want to if you want to race do a good healthy burnout. Gets it's all good for the it's good for the soil to celebrate you know, the soul. Um, but yeah, you can do some serious damage. Um, I can't tell you how many like uh, car shows I've been to, Kevin. Right. And this guy pulls up in his cool truck and he gets up there or his hot rod car or whatever. And he decides to do a brake stand and then uh, transmission falls down on the ground or dry shaft breaks and <laughs> goes through the transmission. So yeah, just you know if you don't have to, you may not want to do that. 
Yeah. All right, friends. Well, that's a wrap on today's video about the do's and don'ts of using an automatic transmission. Thanks, Alex, for providing this excellent list of proper automatic transmission care. No problem. So remember, friends, avoid shifting into neutral while moving and treat your transmission with care to avoid costly repairs down the road. And transmission repairs are always expensive. Yeah. Simple habits like warming up your car before driving can make a world of difference in keeping your transmission healthy. If you found these tips helpful and you enjoyed hearing from Alex today, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more car care advice, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or additional tips that you'd like to hear from Alex on. Alex does monitor the comment section of our car type videos and will be sure to respond to your questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. If you need a car right now and want access to our hassle-free car buying service, visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, or text Liz today at 701-441-3399. And if you'd like to talk to Alex directly about your car-related problem, check out the tab on our website. Click on Ask the Auto Expert. Alex Stevens is available at a low introductory price, just 75 bucks for the phone call, and he's beyond knowledgeable and talented. Alex will continue to join me on future shows as we do our best to help you keep your cars running great and as long as possible. We want your hard-earned money to pay off. If you buy the $75 phone call with Alex, I promise you'll be delighted to talk to him. Either me or Elizabeth will connect you directly to Alex. To all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire homework guy team. Thanks for listening.